So hello everyone, thank you for joining. And I, I really, really appreciate your enthusiasm uh, because you have just got a notice last night and you are all prepared and you have come for, for this session. That's highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would uh, also uh, thank uh, Partho because it was his original idea to bring this uh, cohort together. And also uh, Suresh and uh, Andrian is not here. However, uh, Andrian and Suresh also joined us in uh, making first step. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. And uh, this this initiative is a joint venture by GSFN and uh, UN aligned. Uh, so I think Partho, would you? Uh, of course, you all know GSFN. What we are trying to do, we are doing, uh, trying to build capacities for uh, addressing climate change and also increasing our capacities for sustainable development goals and sustainability. Um, and uh, currently, we are focusing on global south. Uh, however, we know that we uh, we cannot we do not have this challenge only for global south. We are also uh, we do appreciate a global north uh, also having the same challenges in a different context maybe. And uh, I would like Partho to tell something more about UN aligned, and then we can move forward with individual introduction today in a short that what's your name, where you are. Uh, uh, actually uh, located and uh, what you are currently doing and how would this scholarship or involvement will help you at personal level and for GSFN and UN aligned as well. So that is where uh, we want to uh, do that introduction uh, to each other today. And then we will follow up with uh, a small program that we will try to execute within these six months by the end of July. And uh, uh, it will be a learning process for you and us, everyone. So thank you very much. Over to Partho, please. Yeah, thank you. So uh, basically, Unaligned is a NGO which is based in the city of Espoo in Finland. And uh, uh, we uh, basically the goals of our organization are the promotion of environmental protection, animal welfare, human rights and world peace. So uh, in this ca capacity, we have uh, created various programs. So uh, to ensure that uh, people uh, so that we can encourage the development of environmental stewardship and environmental literacy. And uh, in this uh, and, uh, also we have created a climate committee in this climate committee. Uh, we are uh, we have created different uh, research boards these include sustainable energy sustainable transportation sustainable agriculture bioeconomy promotion environmental restoration environmental law sustainable it and uh, positive peace and sustainable leadership climate change and health so in this uh, uh, we are we are uh, we want fellows to uh, to join these research groups and uh, also uh, to, uh, go for some novel research in these fields and apart from that, uh, we uh, also the other aim is to develop critical thinking and systems thinking in the fellows. So the fellows uh, during this uh, uh, during the course of this fellowship, they will be developing research reports, white papers, position papers, environmental impact assessment reports. All these things will be done. And uh, also, if uh, if particular fellows are interested, then we can also go for a quantitative approach also, which will involve mathematical modeling and all. But that depends on the interest of the fellows, if they're interested or not. And so, uh, as uh, G G we are partner partnering with GSFN uh, for this fellowship, and uh, this is the fellowship on positive peace and sustainable leadership. So, in this fellowship, what we are doing is that uh, we are uh, basically, as we know, that mostly what people understand by peace is the negative peace, because people think that peace is the absence of violence. But actually, that is the definition of negative peace. But if we look in our fellowship, we would be focusing on positive peace. So by by positive peace, we mean that it is the attitudes, structures and institutions that can create a peaceful society. Uh, rather, I would say it, a sustainable, peaceful society. So in this uh, uh, context, 
if you look at the like various pillars of positive peace so we have pillars like uh, uh, well functioning go government sound business environment low levels of cor corruption uh, high levels of human capital development reduced inequality and so on so basically uh, in this fellowship uh, the fellows will be taking up uh, you know, the uh, they will explore how sustainable leadership and positive peace are interrelated so basically if you look at sustainable leadership that is very important because now uh, to promote positive peace it is also very important to ensure that uh, like equitable access to the resources is created so if you look at uh, if you look at the projects like if you look at uh, the most of the projects that are taking place so if we look at bioeconomy like uh, uh, bioeconomy promotion and direct democracy promotion they sh they are interlinked so if, if we if we are going for concepts like joint forest management and all in which the people who are the inhabitants of the forest they, uh, through forest rights act and all they can participate in the uh, governance of the uh, the forest management committees and all and they can also uh, like uh, develop sustainable like uh, green jobs through this process and also contribute to the reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation by adopting unique concepts like agroforestry and all so basically these are the things which are very interrelated and that's why uh, i mentioned the term systems thinking because whenever uh, we are looking with, uh, at the uh, whenever we are trying to promote the link between diverse sectors uh, then definitely uh, we have to look at the link between diverse sectors from the point of view that that is needed to promote positive peace in the long run so that's why we have created so many different uh, research boards and uh, the, the you are uh, like uh, this research board on positive peace is a very interesting research board because that will also involve like various uh, different topics and uh, as i mentioned now so that is a very like uh, interesting area and uh, hopefully you can have a great fellowship program yeah. over to you ma'am thank you very much thank you i would also invite today's to talk about his perspective when he tried to join us. So thank you, Suresh. Please, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. And thank you, Parthoda, uh, for this, uh, you know, very interesting, you know, introduction of what we really plan to do. Uh, you know, uh, we, you know, for a, quite some time, we are trying to, or I have been part of several projects which were on climate change and uh, uh, food security for, uh, you know, at least three projects we have implemented in the last 10 years period. But, you know, when we go to field, what we find is, you know, uh, uh, even though at the macro level or the government level or international level, there are lots of policies or lots of, uh, you know, a number of program which are being run but when we talk at the ground grassroots level things are not reaching so that was one very important attraction which you know uh, you know attracted me to this this whole very interesting concept of gs7 which they are trying to propound uh so this is now is high time that uh, you know things whatever is being uh, done at the government level or interest level it reaches to the exact stakeholder on the ground so as Parthuda talked about, you know, when we talk of forestry, you know, community which are, you know, which have a, a livelihood in uh, forest, they must be their interest and their livelihood must be protected. So there is need to create awareness, there is need to create livelihood, there need to, you know, take care of all the system or, or anything which, which can hurt their position or livelihood. So this is, this is a very interesting instance, concept which, uh, Dr. Renupa and uh, this uh, uh, UN Anil uh, Alain has introduced, and I'll be really very, very pleased to participate and uh, you know be part of this program. Uh, so with this, I will uh, you know I will just like to listen to what other fellows who, who, uh, who were part of this um, session uh, uh, have to say about this, and then what kind of ideas they have they have which we can take it forward so thank you so much for giving me time and over to you dr thank you very much thank you uh, i would like to invite mentors first i think uh, the email to mentors must have come uh, as a surprise 
but we thought that because of their expertise, we would like them to help us rather than uh, learn. They would also learn, to, of course, we are also learning through this process. So I would like to invite Amal first to tell about her, introduce uh, and also uh, about her research. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Rinok. Could you please hear, hear me? We can hear you clearly. Thank you very much. In fact, I'm outside, but uh, I'm talking from my, my own car, going to home from work. So uh, I want to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Amal Abdel Halim. I got my PhD from, of environmental engineering from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University in Hong Kong. And um, I was mainly focusing on uh, my research on solid waste management and uh, waste management, wastewater treatment. And also sustainability for sure, sustainability to achieve sustainability goals in terms of uh, waste, waste management, waste to energy, these processes and how can this affect uh, or, or promote for you and SDGs. Thank you, Amal. Thank you very much. We have another mentor uh, who is, uh, I'm just looking here, one second. Um, Dr. Pranjal, is he here? Okay, Dr. Pranjal has accepted our mentorship, but he's not here yet. And the another one is uh, Tumus, uh, I think the other person who is, uh, I let me look at the full name. Okay, and He is from uh, Zimbabwe, Tafa, Tafa and I don't think he is here. However, okay, so they will join. I think it was a real short notice, so uh, it's perfectly well. So I will start with uh, Dawn. Down, down. Who is down? Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, I see here uh, Down's iPhone. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I'm Don. Uh, it's DAW, like the early morning. Um, I am currently the vice chairperson of Unaligned. Um, so I am with uh, Parto here. Instead of Adrian, I think Adrian was supposed to attend, but in oh, short I notice. understand now. So I please, uh, Accept my apologies. Uh, apologies uh, for like, I apologize for not recognizing you. So uh, please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all right. Uh, so I'm currently based in Australia. Um, I'm doing my masters in uh, development economics and policy making at the University of Queensland. Uh, I have been part of Underline for more than a year now. Um, so the research fellows over here, I'm sure they must be uh connected with the climate committee so i run separately the policy and governance committee unaligned so um i and i'm very glad to be a part of this meeting today and i'm looking forward to meeting all the fellows as well as you ma'am thank you so much thank you very much thank you uh, so now we have frank uh, simborgi Frank? Okay. Let us have, uh, have Hilary Muniole. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Thank uh, you. Th so I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity. First of all, my name is Hilary Mnyole from Kenya. 
I'm currently working as an environmental lab, like as a researcher, but uh, professionally, I'm a water resource management. I finished my diploma in water resource management in the year 2020. And when I came back home, I first identified the problem in my community. And after identifying the problem in, in my community, what I did is that I did some reading and I did some research to get to it to understand on how we can relate with the sustainable development goals for us to enlighten our local community on matters to do with the restoration of water related eco like as a system in marginalized community. I'm happy to be here and happy to engage with you guys so that we see to it that we unlock the potential of humanity within ourselves because we are one people and we are here to engage and to empower one another. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I would like to invite Judith here to introduce herself. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Judith Musa. I come from Kenya, but I'm currently in Bonn. Um, I'm pursuing Master of Science, Geography of Environmental Risks and Human Security at UN Campus and University of Bonn. And my background is environmental studies and community development. I've done a whole lot of stuff with communities, which I like doing. And I have embraced both um, indigenous and scientific knowledge systems. And I am glad to be here today because just last week we finished a course on global leadership training program on sustainable development in Africa. And we were talking about all sorts of things that are happening in the global south, especially in Africa. And I remember my assignment was on um, African traditional peace building systems in Africa for Africa. And when I saw this program, I was really glad that I'll be able to now link positive peace and sustainable development, which is a field that I'm going to further. And I hopefully that by the end of this program, I'll be in a good position to go ahead and get venture into the field of peace and security. And yeah, especially in Africa. So I look forward to the exciting engagement with all of you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. I think you you would definitely be a good resource to us as well because we are embarking on GSFN is doing Kenya Summit this month. Did you listen to that news? Are you aware of that? Not yet. I think I, I think that skipped my mind because having a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on 18, 19, 20, we are having Kenya Summit and uh, please join us if you have time. Uh, if we have already advertised, we can advertise again. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, being here. I think it will be an interesting uh, journey with you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, may I invite Masood Alam? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Renuka. Uh, I've already introduced myself, but I'll uh, definitely give a short or very brief introduction about me. I'm Mashud Adam. Uh, I have done my PhD from uh, Jamia Millet Samia, New Delhi, India. And my PhD is focuses on is focusing on the, the climate uh, distributed justice, the dynamics of the change in Quebec how the debates regard, related to climate justice being uh, you know, debated at the different platforms like the USCC and the SCOP and various other platforms. So, and apart from that, my uh, PhD is also dealt with the, as you mentioned, there's a, a problem in the North as well. So I would say there's a, there's a South in the North as well. The South, if you can, uh, if you also have heard about the climate catastrophe facing by the uh, Alaskan uh, indigenous community. So there's a south in the north as well. So my PhD not only focuses on the uh, north-south relation uh, debate uh, over the emission and the historical responsibility, but also on 
on on this on the south southern part of the uh, you know uh, uh, glow north and apart from that i did my um, uh, mphil uh, from the same university at the international relations uh, uh, academy of international relations jamia islamia and apart and uh, also i i i did my masters in social work from the same university and currently i am working as a senior uh, research associate at the uh, brcg research and development organization uh, based out of new delhi where i look into various uh, you know research uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, research from the secondary sources, primary sources, and I and, and I write uh, uh, you know uh, articles, research paper, uh, incorporating all the current environmental issues, climate change issues, which affects uh, largely marginalized section of the society, and uh, also I also write on uh, uh, domestic policy, uh, plastic issues, waste management, and various other issues. So this is it. and i am looking forward to you know gain very you know insight from uh, the expert uh, from the various part of the world which is you know which has joined this group so i'm looking forward thank you so much thank you mohammad alam i think you would be a great resource actually to mentor as well along while you are doing your work uh, you have plenty of experience i can see so uh, yeah uh, great to have you uh, and uh, uh, sorry uh, anyone uh, who introduce yourself please also say where are you located like where are you located and where you come from so that would be good to know as well okay so thank you very much i will invite now uh, um muktiyar one second please uh, yeah Muktiyar Ali, uh, please uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I am Muktiyar Ali. I am high school teacher. Uh, recently, I am a direct or indirect part of a GFSN, and this is uh, good for me. Uh, I am uh, working under Miss uh, Professor Renuka, and I am recently volunteer working in a climate change project in a school base. So I am teaching my student how we save the mm -hmm. climate and what we do for good uh, soul health. This is uh, my aim, and thank you very much, uh, Ms. Anika. I am from Pakistan and Jamshoro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Muktiyar. Um, may I have urge uh, Adoma? I I think I can I I must add for Muktiyar that though he is not quite uh, you know professionally uh, qualified, but he has a very good insight into public uh, uh, engagement and administration. Like what are the problems of public, and that is where I think he can add uh, a value coming from the practical ground level um, experiences. Thank you very much being with us. Sir Adomao, would uh, would you be happy to introduce yourself now? Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello, everyone. Before I start, I like to say that I'm not very good in English. I'm not more at ease in French than in English. So um, please me for my. Uh, for my mis mistake. Don't worry I, oh, at all. Don't worry okay. at all. Please keep on. Okay. okay. My name is uh, Dumisesh. I'm from Benin, and I live in Parku. I have a master's degree in management of natural resources with a specialization in forest science. I also have a bachelor's degree in agronomy with a specialization. In natural resources management, I obtained both degree at the University of Parku, Republic of Benin. My area of interest include agroecology, forestry, sustainable land management, cartography, and uh, spatial remote sensing, biodiversity science, natural resources management, ecosystem services, forest ecology, and uh, climate change. <laughs> this uh, opportunity represent a chance of for me to network and uh, exchange with experts 
like uh, Dr. Wemka. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'll be able to acquire knowledge on the development of a new solution to problems related to sustainable leadership and a positive pace. Uh, thank you to all for, of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, no one should worry here that if you don't know anything or because we all are learning from each other and you know that this platform is for only those who want to learn. Okay, so don't worry at all. Uh, Tina, may I, uh, welcome, um, uh, may I ask you to introduce yourself? Thank you very much. Yes, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Renuka. I want to express my sincerest gratitude to you and appreciation for allowing us to be a part of this platform. So as mentioned by Renuka, my name is Tina Renier. I am based in Jamaica. I've received my Bachelor of Science in International Relations with first class honors from the University of the West Indies Mona in Jamaica. And I did my master's in Canada in International Development Studies with special emphasis on women, gender and development, labor and development and development policies, strategies and evaluation. And I've also had a multifaceted experience in integrated policy analysis, research and evaluation, education administration and reporting, and also anti-money laundering investigations and counter-terrorist financing. And in terms of my multifaceted background, I think I have a lot of expertise to offer to our team especially around sustainable peace and sustainable leadership and their interconnectedness to uh, achieving the sustainable development goals. And I'm so happy to be here and great to hear from you all. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Vijay Kumar Kati, it's your take the floor, please. Uh, namaste. My name is Vijay Kumar Katti. I'm from Bombay, near Bombay, staying in Thane. I'm into social activities since 1993 onwards. Uh, I would like to address the issues at the root level rather than uh, understanding the subject myself. And uh, let's practice it along with the people. That's the reason I've done a lot of work. Uh, this is not the time to express all those things. What I believe and what I would like to practice is build a sustainable family. It starts with me, my family. It has to be sustainable. Then it builds the sustainable world, which I launched on Women's Day. I have already received more than 3,000 people's participation in that. Here the process is, I would like to learn the good practices done by the family members, whether it is a food wastage or a plastic wastage or anything else is there. Let's learn it and share the knowledge among all the people. Because a family is the macro level organized sector of the society. If that changes, the community changes. That's the basic fundamental which I'm working on it. Many things can be done and a lot of people are there with a different interest, different area of uh, in working for the globe. It will be a great honor and uh, support from all the people, whatever the best they can give it. But I would like to understand what exactly the research, this group wants to do it, where I can participate, where I can contribute, what I need to know about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vijay Kumar. We will come to those points definitely uh, very soon. So just hold on that. Um, may I request Temidayo Adulojo uh, to introduce? Yeah, hello everyone. Hello. Um, Temidayo, yeah. Okay, let me start again. I 
working with you. I'm an academic researcher. And so um, um, over a decade experience, I'm based in Nigeria. I work with um, Lagos State University. Um, hey, Lagos State. Um, Hello, can and, um, you can you uh, stop your video and just speak? Maybe uh, we can hear you clearly. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, now we okay, can please? hear you clearly. Oh, okay. So maybe I should just briefly um, reiterate myself. I am Temi Dayola Judge, an academic researcher. Um, I work with Lagos State University in Nigeria. I, I lecture quantity surveying. Yeah, a course in the environmental sciences. And um, I am actually glad to be part of this program because we know that the promotion of the sustainable leadership and peace, no doubt, in terms of sustainable development. And for us in the global south, I believe this is the time for us to address the climate change variables such as um, temperature, humidity, humidity, and, and so on. And, um, and um, it will help the leadership role, the aspect of the leadership role, will help in reducing inequalities that is being experienced mostly in the global south and to promote um, the pillars, the, like the eight pillars of positive peace, like we were told the other time about the particular about positive peace here, and not just relative peace, such as a well functioning government, one of the things that we needed in the global south. We need sound business environment, equitable distribution of resources, relations with neighbors, free flow of information, very important, sustainability and we're talking about having freedom of speech. So I believe one of the, I believe um, in the course of the program I'll be able to learn more about how sustainable leadership can promote um, positive peace in these areas and so I'm very grateful to be part of this um, program and I believe that I will have a wonderful ride to more. Thank you very much ma'am. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, it was not a bit clear, but if you want to write down your uh, about you in the chat, sorry, we can uh, 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 understand more. So thank you very much for being <laughs> with us. And I also understand that, uh, like, as I understood that you are quite senior in research as well. So probably we can help, take your help in mentoring and assisting people as well. So here, uh, thank you for everyone to give some time here and uh, be uh, together. Now, uh, so the question what Vijay Kumar uh, already asked is that how we go about it and what we are going to do and so on. Um, the uh, uh, There are two options, uh, whoever, uh, because I don't think, any one of you are in a mainstream uh, learning process. I mean, connected to university as a student, okay? You might be connected to the university as a, a lecturer or any other position, but not as a research student. Uh, am I correct with everyone? Yes, ma'am, yes. Okay, good. So uh, uh, why I wanted to say that, because if you are a connected, uh, I mean, research student connected to university, then probably you can use this piece, whatever we are going to develop as your assignment or your research project in university also. And that is why I asked. But however, uh, uh, we don't want uh, like anything is not going to be different uh, just because you are not at, uh, associated with any university. Because we want common people uh, uh, views and we want you to write down something related to your interest, but specifically with the skills that Patho explained you before, uh, that having a scientific rigor and also how to uh, present it so that public can digest uh, even the decision makers and uh, like I would say today in this world only not only policy makers are the decision makers okay so policy, uh, policy makers 
regulators and the citizens all are uh, equally i think decision makers and we want your piece of work that we develop should be scientifically backed with appropriate sources and so on and also with the primary knowledge if we can get it uh, and uh, produce it in a way that it is acceptable by uh, people uh, we want it to have a little bit of academic rigor because if the, uh, we get into group of three or four people then we can produce an article and we can submit to the journal article and it can be produced as a journal article. Otherwise, we can produce as a blog to on, on our website, GSFN and UN also. And it can be also developed as a policy paper that can be uh, given to particular uh, entity where we want to address, uh, I mean, uh, target. So, uh, these are all different possibilities. At the same time, I have also create, uh, uh, come to know one opportunity with UNFCCC that uh, uh, there is no submission being done for the capacity building. Uh, uh, I will read out the exact uh, title to that. One second. And it is... Uh, like support provided for capacity building in developing countries. That is the title or where people have not submitted at all. And the another one is progress made in enhancing capital uh, capacity to address climate change. Now these programs, what we do actually at G GSFN can be counted towards this area. We are, uh, though, I know that government has not asked us to do this or they are not part of our, uh, but however, if anyone of you have a contact with your local government or local authority and so on, and how we can engage with them uh, through your research and uh, uh, through their you know, uh, activities, and build into that and bring some uh, concrete examples to show uh, this, uh, what I'm trying to submit here as a capacity building in developing, uh, developing countries, then that might be also an interesting out outcome of it. However, this, what I'm saying about UNFCCC needs to go at the end of this March. So uh, there may not be enough time. So uh, that is just, uh, uh, what I was also trying to achieve, but we we are not, we do not have enough time to do that. But we can do in do it in subsequent subsequent uh, year, that is in next year. Having said that, now we have two options. Uh, but I will uh, I will just propose and then stop here so that Suresh and others and all of you uh, can contribute to it. So we have two options. Mm -hmm. Either we go for individual. Uh, one second, please. Hello, yeah. 
So we have two alternates here and we have three months to go, uh, like uh, from starting from now, we want to complete by Ju June 15 so that we can finalize by July and then we can have another cohort. Um, so it should be a small piece of work and uh, overarching uh, aim and will be what we have already suggested and given to you. Now, it depends on how you want to work. If someone thinks that you are substantially uh, competent, that you want to do an individual work, then that is also fine. And if we want to work in a group, like uh, having uh, two or three countries maybe together to show differences or similarities and so on, then that is also fine. Uh, if you are working individual also, you will get a mentor and uh, they will help you out. And if you are group, again, you will get a mentor or maybe we can have one or two mentors at the same time and so on. So we have all the flexibilities here. Uh, so um, what I will suggest that I will share uh, the uh, uh, spreadsheet which we already have which you have already filled up uh, through the form and so we have everyone's name and that uh, the second po uh, step would be to just identify a working title about your work and write down that against your uh, row against your names that is in your row so working title and based on working title, we will have uh, different mentors to you. Uh, so we will allot a mentor to you. And then uh, uh, if we think that two or three topics, uh, I mean, uh, working title are very similar or having common element, then we will ask you whether you want to group it or not. And that is how we, uh, I think we can move forward. But I will stop here. This is my very initial idea. I will stop and I will listen to everyone whoever wants to tell and shape it better. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Enuka, for this. Yes. Very, very good introduction of what we really plan to do under this uh, fellowship program. This is really, really very interesting. Uh, you know, what I personally feel and, uh, you know, we can just uh, break the area, as you suggested, uh, you know, theme wise, if some, somebody working on, you know, some uh, something like, uh, you know, based on certain different sustainable development goals, so we can divide it as a, um, uh, you know uh, based on the resumes and or, or application we have received we can divide this based on the type of in uh, interest they have in different areas and then we can accordingly allocate or work with them uh, uh, on their project uh, this is th there are several areas which i feel we can really work on one one as suggested by Mr. Kati, one is sustainable family is a something which uh, is a concept which I feel this is something very very new to this whole. I have I have heard about everything sustainable, but sustainable family I heard only from Mr. Kati. So this is something if we can develop something very good on this, that can probably I I'm I'm not sure whether if anybody else is discussing this uh, sustainable family. Uh, but if, if not, then we can develop a very good note, concept note, or a paper on this, what we mean by this. And then we can take it forward through our platform, um, through GSFN, or we can even take it to even FCCG or, or, or other relevant bodies. Uh, and we can also, you know, uh, come up with some program to see, uh, we can do some pilot testing on this we can, to see whether this program can really go or not. So that is one part of this. Uh, another thing is, uh, you know, all the most of the researchers, they, they have their own area of interest. For example, I know a bit about Mashud. He's working on, uh, you know, uh, this uh, heat, climate heat, uh, heat, 
and then other uh, disaster management issues so he can he can pick up some some area which is relevant to india and also relevant to this whole southern world and also to the whole of humanity so this we can develop it uh, based on in uh, having an indian perspective how things are placed and then you can through this our platform we can take it forward uh, maybe we uh, it, it can go to through gsfa it can go to you know other relevant bodies internationally and internationally so th that is another perspective which you can do and uh, we can you know as um, as you also talked about you know this this has to go to the exact grassroots. So whatever we do, it must flow from the grassroots level. So secondary literature is okay, but things have to, because we uh, our purpose is not to just write papers or articles. The messaging should go to the grassroots level, at the grass, reach the grassroots people. So that is, also, and therefore our, our moving to the grassroots level is also, that will be very, very important. Uh, so these are some perspective, maybe. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very uh, much. I got your idea. And so possibly what we have to now do, then first of all, uh, we have to keep, a, uh, a, when you are saying grassroots level, meaning that we have to increase capacity of the grassroots yeah. evil. And therefore, yeah. uh, I think we should have primary element in our research. And primary yes. element, what I mean by primary, a primary element is to going back to the community where you are local. And yes. because that is only possible. I, or, or it could be something like that where you can connect online. But I would yes. say uh, within online, it is uh, it might be difficult, but you can also create WhatsApp group yeah, yeah. Yeah. As, as your recept, uh, participants. And then understand the basic problem that they have and how we can then build the capacity, build the capacity in the sense of what type of infrastructure is needed, what type of skills are needed, what type of employment are needed, or and if we want to create all this, then the, what type of policy is needed. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, along with the policies that is coming from the government, it takes a long time. So while we are waiting for the policies, what the community can do by gathering themselves and start doing something that would uh, also influence the government that, yes, this is working and therefore we need to have such policy and uh, finance to support that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, certainly... Uh, uh, these five elements should be within our research. Just with your permission, I will just like to give you one example, which, you know, uh, while undertaking a field trip, what I observe, you know, I, I traveled to Varanasi. There is a place, very holy place in India, Varanasi. Uh, there, uh, on the banks of this river, there is one, uh, one community there, which we call Nisad community. Nisad means those who are boatmen. Uh, boatmen community lived there for a long, uh, for centuries. They are, you know, they for a long, long time, they want to, you know, very actively participate in disaster management, especially when there is flooding or when there is any anything related to, you know, heavy rainfall or loss of life or loss of property. They, they want to play a bigger role in this. But because of local issues and local, uh, you know, uh, interest of, uh, you know, varying interest of different stakeholders, they are really not able to get into the system and therefore they are not able to contribute. Now, if uh, if you can do something, so th this is just an example. So there are, uh, if we talk about forest community, things are almost similar. We know there are several issues which, uh, which are impacting their lives and livelihood, also the whole of environment. And if we can enable them to participate fully each with uh, in development program, probably things will things will impressively change for for betterment of all uh, all uh, pe people and all the whole of society. So the, the, there are several gaps to that gaps and and the, when we talk of capacity building, that gaps are also to be identified and then we have to see how we can really contribute to this bridge this gap through capacity building. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say something. Yes, sir. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. 
thank you suresh for appreciating the concept uh, that's what i said the macro level organized sector is family and this is his family members are also working in a policy makers or a, a other positions in the organization if the family they want to take care of it they will definitely not compromise anything yes that that thinking starts coming in that's what i call it as a positive piece because no family member will be against anybody because they are emotionally bonded and they care for each other they do everything for the family members that's where we can find out and secondly my concept is not to teach them i would like to ask what they are doing it during my last 15 days conversation with the people when i said when i go there to tell something people will be hesitant or reluctant or i don't know already all these things i would i went and asked them how do you save food the simple same one question has went on for almost 3 and 1/2 hours we went to the components of cooking also where the gas is coming from how best we can utilize it what are the resources available with them it has all 17 goals can be achieved in my family itself and secondly most of people we are all become materialistic irrespective of whatever the class we are we want to know what the benefit to me when i talked about to them on a food waste they said how can it help me i said then i showed them if you don't waste it you save money you save money it means you are coming above the poverty level if you are coming above the poverty level you are eating a fresh food which will lead to the good health this is the way i would like when i explain to them without using any sdg goal numbers then finally i say this is the goal of universal this is what the way they would like to develop it some people have already sent me the uh, what best practice they are doing it i would like to appreciate them i would like to be and this is a, actually a community building that's what uh, mr partha was saying we should develop a community it may be small in the beginning but definitely it has very high impact i discussed this with a food uh, say <clears throat> food safety and security of, uh, of india they appreciated it mostly on 22nd of april i am discussing with them so that they can introduce this kind of activity in uh, all food processing industries it means sustainability practice at the industrial level it is they are taking it to their own staff level it helps a lot and actually speaking it doesn't need a financial support it need a willingness to spare time you can find out all the disasters can be solved when people participate in it without people only talking doesn't make any difference i have indirectly what i'm talking is peep indigenous people's participation you can define all 17 goals in the activity when you take it to family and implementation will be perfect they will not compromise anything for the benefit of their own family that's where i say it, the trust is there because when i say to something to my child he will definitely listen to me but then uh, definite this thing that my father cares for me the same thing reciprocated what he learns he come back and tell me and i said yes we are not doing it we should do it this is how i would like to work on it and i have an expertise on a plantation and other things uh, nearly i have done a plantation of more than 3 lakhs outdoor plantation i have trained more than 75000 families on indoor plantation sustainability if you want to learn it try to learn plantation it will give the immense depth knowledge how the sustainability can be practiced not promoted not advocated you can start practicing sustainability at each at each activity that you are doing it this is my submission if anybody would like to support my this thing in any way making it appealing to the uh, uh, policy makers or it may be to regulatory authorities it will be a highly commendable work a team together we can make a difference i cannot make a difference i can only think about it this is what my proposal is 
let's discuss on it take advantage of it and 26 january uh, april i am presenting this paper on a global network community they have already accepted it 26th i am there in delhi then i will meet definitely suresh and uh, mohammed to take their guidance also so we can make a fantastic at yeah. least my family will become sustainable that will make my neighbor sustainable my relative sustainable that is one to cover four four to cover it, it it goes multiplies in a number of ways thank you uh thank you vijay i would like to add here now hmm. having this concept is good having a uh, initial idea is good and also uh, when it is working it is good and i think we have to go beyond that which is critical thinking when for example people do not have family many people do not have family they are not supported as a family what will happen there what are what what can we bring to them so uh can i say something okay. Okay. can so, i say something here can i say something family I, I know we can debate on that we can debate no, family definition of a family is not only restricted to husband and wife family is always is a place where we trust each other the okay. definition so, changes the so, definition so that i'm saying we can debate on that and we want others others view into the research and that is what it is called research i know there are plenty of you know our uh, concepts i also have this gsfn concept that everyone will come on board and we can achieve a stakeholder collaboration in a way that we can increase everyone's capacity right but i am experiencing the challenges every day so what are those challenges and how i can address those challenges and how can i move forward for with an opportunities and then what others think about me why others are uh, not giving as much as my uh, time or uh, ambition or aspiration as me so see so that is uh, what is called critical thinking and i think that is what we have to again appreciate in research a lot uh, so of course uh, we must present your idea uh, it is not a bad idea i don't discard uh, discount it at all because i also believe in family values but we have to establish that through research so we may take out you know like uh, 50 100 participants would talk on it and oh, they will also debate on it that what what are the challenges what are the opportunities and then how we can move forward how we can bring a common voice together how we can also develop an infrastructure that would allow families to grow so that is where i i am coming from uh, i we have another uh, year hilary uh munia le uh, writing uh, something here and uh, would you like to speak hilary or should i read out what do you say i hilary are you able to speak maybe not patho are you there Yes, I am there. Can we hear from you then? Yeah. So uh, basically, in my opinion, uh, actually the uh, the entire thing is as uh, Dr. Thakur also mentioned that it is integrating the diverse sectors and developing critical thinking. So that is one of the main objectives which we have. And uh, apart from that. now what i have observed through my professional experience is that people might be skilled in uh, one particular profession like they might be good engineers or they may be good doctors uh, they may, may they may be good lawyers but when the cross cultural knowledge like cross sectoral knowledge comes uh, like uh, in the question of cross sectoral uh, knowledge comes and integrating that knowledge comes so people find experience difficulties so and that is not generally taught in the universities also how to integrate that knowledge across diverse sectors so as a part of this fellowship we are doing just that we are integrating knowledge across diverse sectors so that people can do novel research and they can 
at least they become like uh, conversant with the basics of the other sectors for example sustainability is a vast field it in, uh, like it includes energy transportation environmental restoration like agriculture and also uh, environmental law health and uh, also uh, like uh, it it also includes positive peace as we are like in this fellowship we would be discussing about that and so definitely it's a, it is a very vast area and uh, to be successful in the field of sustainability what is required is that people have to have uh, they have to have knowledge about diverse fields and uh, until unless that knowledge is present so basically they will be lagging behind in, in some issues so that's why i think it's a good idea to integrate the knowledge and develop systems thinking and critical thinking thank you okay thank you anyone else want to add now yeah yes hilary please go on yes dr renoka so what i could like to say just to echo from my colleagues is that uh, if we can have collaboration because we belong from different geographical areas because when you see uh, the heart the heart and soul of uh, of the marginalized community actually lies in in this movement it means that we need now to go back in grassroots and and identify the problem because when we are talking about research from our observation we are really experiencing uh, degradation where we come from and it's because of information gap and uh, from our research that we are going to do is that we should include the indigenous knowledge inside for example right now when you look at the mountain echo like as a system in, marginal, in marginalized community they are being degraded by the local people because they lack the information and for for our information that mountain Echo, echo like as a like, like as a system it is really helping the area around the place if we can actually go there and have a study and uh, and like as a furthermore in rural community like as a currently we are doing the aggregate extraction whereby there is mining occurring there and we can also engage those people by doing the research and i conquer with my fellow colleagues by by letting them know that if we can collaborate and identify the root causes and get to bridge, because if we can have the information, actually, we will be able to share it out and we will be able to build a resilient community. Because our aim actually is to limit the global warming and and we have the divergent interests. So it means that in in our like. I mean, research, we should include a holistic and inclusive approach because where we are going is that we need also to learn from one another and to accept every decision made. I just want to echo on that, Dr. Renuka. And I, and I uh, want to thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given me. Thank you. There. Thank you, Hilary. Where are you from, Hilary? I'm from Kenya, Western, Western Kenya. Okay. Okay. Western Kenya, yeah. Uh, so you need to voice yourself uh, in our Kenya summit. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, telling this. It is definitely, uh, you know, practical way of uh, uh, knowing this, that we have to be in the within the ground level. We have, and, and I think everyone here, even, even Vijay Kumar's uh, concept is something that we have to start with our family or the indigenous people or you know like ground level everyone here is is having the same uh, you know uh, understanding i mean we are common in those things and we also are common in bringing practical knowledge uh, and uh, going forward so i think let us let us go back at home and think and what I would suggest, first of all, please write down the working title. And working title should be like seven to eight words working title. We can change the title, but it should be working title so that we can understand that, okay, you, you want, and along with that, what you want to achieve. Say, for example, you want to, as, as for Vijay Kumar, it could be something like he wants to develop a 
concept note to be presented in UNFCC or high level for family construction or family sustainability concept, something like that. Then let us have that objective that what is the outcome you want? Or someone maybe like you want to have uh, an outcome of uh, like what is working for them in a sense of maybe is it a framework how how we can establish that working relationship between all these elements of uh, local uh, area and progress towards making a resilient uh, community right so I would say two or three things are definitely needed to give a start. One is working title, what you want to achieve. And that can be like aim and objectives, but uh, what you want to achieve is uh, very important. And based on that, we can have your aim and objectives. Generally in research, we always start with like main aim, objectives, and then we think about methodology. But when we have that purpose, what is the purpose of your research? What you want to achieve? If that is clear, we can find out all the ways to reach there. Okay. So I think with these uh, three or four things by tomorrow evening, uh, uh, if you can put it down against, so I will again put an email to everyone with that uh, or maybe, uh, but here we don't have everyone uh, just now. So I will put a uh, link to the spreadsheet where everyone's name and uh, uh, most things are present as you filled out in the form. And I will mark one column for you to write down your working title. And then second, your purpose or achieve what you want to achieve that is like outcome, you can think whatever the name you want, like what is the end product of at the end of these six of these three months, what you have, what you want in your hand that you will be proud of that. Okay, I have done something and that is what we want to know. And then based on that, we can have aim and objectives. You know, generally aim is something that you want to achieve. But your objective is that they are the things that would allow you to achieve the aim, okay? So for example, like if I want to develop a framework for GSFN, then my objective would be to understand stakeholders, to uh, critically understand the, uh, uh, what you say, uh, uh, the demographic of my uh, uh, stakeholders, then probably uh, to understand what are the priorities of my stakeholders. And based on that, I can uh, then finally analyze and see, okay, this is the framework that might help me to achieve whatever I want to achieve through GSFN. So uh, this, uh, this type of objectives, it will be like to understand, to uh, review to collect or to so they are called uh, objectives or the and based on that you will carry out some task so this is the primary uh i think uh, starting point to go and probably i would ask you because we are a little bit in hurry by tomorrow and or or let us say by the end of this week if you are ready, I think uh, you should be ready by the end of uh, uh, like tomorrow only so that uh, uh, we can get some time to review. And uh, then 18, 19, 20, we have this uh, uh, Kenya summit. And probably there you can al already start uh, gathering your data or you want something to do uh, that can be helpful uh, for you. But we will have an, uh, another meeting uh, on uh, 21st. But that will be with, uh, so by then we will allot you the mentors and it will be between your mentors. So then you will not have a group meeting for uh, until the next month. We will again uh, come back 
in a group meeting next month to uh, you know exchange our ideas what are your learnings and how we want to uh, move forward and all that but uh, by 20 first like a 21st we want you to have first meeting with your mentors so i will stop here and i will listen to any uh, any comment you have and then we can close the meeting oh I don't uh, have anything. Yes. We'll wait for the one mail. second. One second. Uh, thank you. Sorry uh, for that. One second. What we have also done, we have a scoring system to assess your progress. And it is just a face value scoring system based on your what you have written to us on the uh, concept. Uh, I mean, the form. We have scored you already. And most of you are uh, on a high level of scoring. But that is only for application okay now going forward when you do your these three activities which i mentioned uh, working title objective and the uh, i mean aim and objective if you can work out those three things and then uh, have your first uh, meeting with your mentor we will again okay, the mentors will score you based on what you have written we will just use this scoring to understand how you progress and we will explain you the scoring as well it will be the scoring will be done by discussing with you not initially we have done uh, uh, between discussing between us uh, but now we will do it by discussing with you so that you can understand where you are and how you are and how you want to progress. So uh, that would help you the learning process. Okay, uh, now please uh, Vijay Kumar. No, nothing to say, the concept is good. Let's wait for the spreadsheet. Let's take it further, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Muktiar also had raised his hand if, uh, uh, do you want to speak anything? Uh, I just uh, want to speak. Uh, I think uh, two pair uh, is a better for uh, working. Okay, yeah. We can have two people uh, definitely. Uh, don't worry. So uh, we will look for you. So that is the choice. You can uh, have two people, three people working together. That is no problem. And you can write down within your uh, working title, uh, write down that comment that you want to work in a group rather than individual. So that is perfectly well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes, Judith. I think so. Thank no, you so much. No question, anyone. Thank you so much. Um, it's been interesting to listen to this. And I, I, I think for somebody who has only written a blog before and not much more, I feel like this is a really nice opportunity to learn. And I like the whole idea of mentorship because... We are all learning and some of us are just young people who are aspiring to become researchers, like some of the experienced mentors that we have. And the whole issue of uh, my, um, collaborating and working together, I think that one should really come after somebody has written their working title so that you know whether you really fit into this topic or if you think that somebody has something that would be interesting for you then it's okay to just email them. That is why it has, I think it is good that we, it is a choice to choose to work with somebody or other people or alone. So I yes, think sure. we, 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 can, we can first have the topics and then you, you see which one maybe you think it would be a good collaboration and then you can, you can have a chat with some, that person and then from there you can agree. 
Yes, certainly, certainly. So that's why we are going to keep everything open and everything transparent between us. So we all know what we are doing and how we are progressing. We can assess ourselves and uh, we can produce a better quality environment for everyone to have a strong research skills. And, and that's the biggest, uh, you know, like... Uh, our uh, priority for GSFN to create a strong research environment. And this is a starting, uh, you know, first inception in it, okay? So thank you very much. Uh, you are free to look at everyone's bio and what you think, and you can also, uh, there are email addresses also there and also WhatsApp number are also there. You can connect with each other. I hope no one minds connecting with each other and uh, feel free to connect and uh, move from there, okay? Yes, any last comment? No? Thank you, thank you very much. I will make three or four columns for you and uh, soon send an email. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you so much as well. Okay, thank you, thank you.